Hey gorgeous, it's Denise here from LuckyBitch.com and today on the blog, we're doing something really cool. We are interviewing, well we, when I say we, I am interviewing one of my absolutely amazing mentors, Marie Folio. She is a very incredibly successful woman. She is a multi-millionaire. She has created the iconic B-School and I have interviewed her a couple of times in a row and last year I asked her about her past. You know, like how did she grow up around money? What were some of the things she learned around money as a kid? And this year I thought, let's go further, right? Because how often do you get to pick the brain of somebody who is that successful, both from a influence and also from a monetary point of view, right? So it's kind of juicy. So in this interview, I asked Marie about things like, what is one of the most recent money lessons you've learned? How do you deal with your money so you don't get ripped off? And what have you learned from a famous people that she's been hanging out with like Tony Robbins, Oprah and Richard Branson? You're absolutely going to love this interview. And at the end of it, if you're interested in my B-School bonus, you can go to luckybitch.com slash B-School, which is just the letter B and then school, all one word. And you can find out about our awesome B-School bonus this year. But in the meantime, enjoy this interview with Marie. She gives us some really juicy money stuff. All right, let's do it. So hi, Marie. Thanks again for, for joining us. Our conversation last year was so juicy, and I know we can go even deeper into it this year. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. It's always a pleasure to talk to you, Denise. So last year, we kind of talked a little bit about your upbringing around money and some of those lessons. And I remember you, you were saying about, you know, like you ironed money and stuff like that as a kid. And That's crazy. Yeah, it's really cool. And I think my community love hearing about that kind of stuff, about how someone, you know, starts around money. And I, you know, I'll link to that below for those of you who want to go and revisit that. But I thought this year... I'd love to ask you about what you've been learning about money recently, because I mean, one of the things I love doing is just being transparently honest about money mm -hmm. and also giving people role models of real wealthy woman, women, right? Mm -hmm. I like, it's pretty safe to say you are a freaking successful, wealthy, million, multi-millionaire. Like, let's just claim that, right? Thank you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's the truth. Yeah. You're really, really freaking successful. So what's a recent money lesson that you've learned as someone who is a wealthy, successful woman? I think really that there's always more to learn. So to give a concrete example, um, a few years back, I had kind of tidied up my wills and, you know, things of that nature and really made it a goal to be just completely debt free, like no mortgages, no anything and reached those goals, got some paperwork done, but then realized, you know, there's always another level. And so the thing that I'm looking at this year is going kind of back into some of the paperwork, looking at some of the finer details and working with people who are just really good at helping someone kind of manage and grow their wealth. You know, it's one thing when you're first getting started and in my own story, I was piles and piles and piles of debt. Um, you know, I grew up in a, a very kind of middle class, working class household. So having money and understanding how to manage it, that was not really an issue. It was just always about how do we get by? How do you put food on the table? Can we save for education? It was the bare necessities. So for me, I'm always about asking questions and continuing to learn and push myself to become more and more educated, more and more responsible. So that's really my money lesson this year is like, okay, well, what haven't I handled yet? You know, and how can I find wise, intelligent people to work with whom I trust that can support yeah. me in reaching the next level of goals. Yeah. Cause I hear sometimes people say, I want to make money. So I never have to think or worry about money again. And it's like, you That's do not need to think about it. Yes. And I understand that sentiment though. I absolutely understand the emotion and the psychology behind that. And I think that it's accurate, but from a tactical level, that's not realistic, nor is it wise. So perhaps you'll get yourself to a place, and I think all of us want to, right, where you're not necessarily stressing over money anymore and you're earning enough and you have yourself set up. So you're obviously spending less than you earn, you're saving, you're investing. So on that level, you're taken care of, but you can't just set it and forget it. That's not how money works. And I don't think that's a wise move for anyone. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, I've just seen recently Alanis Morissette has just come out and said, 
that her manager embezzled multi millions from her, and we hear this all the time. Yep. So you know, how do you personally keep an eye on your money? I've heard Oprah signs every check and like yep. still you know knows exactly what's coming in and out. So what are you doing at the moment to make sure things like that don't happen to you? I look in my accounts and I talk to the people that help me and that work with me, you know, our accountant, our bookkeeper, my director of operations, um, folks who manage my money. I stay in close connection with them. So it's not ever a long period of time that things go by where I'm not in there looking at what's happening and paying attention to it. So it's never more than like a few days or a week without me seeing exactly what's happening. So hopefully, and again, I trust the people on my team, but even if you do trust the people on your team, mistakes happen. And we also live in a world where there happens to be um, a lot of fraud and there's a lot of kind of cybersecurity issues that I think we just all have to be aware of and handle. So even if everyone on your team is absolutely above board and has your best interest at heart, I think all of us have to just take those precautions to stay engaged, to look, to be aware of what's in the accounts, to know what's coming in and out, so that if something's a little funny, you catch it fast. Oh, yeah. And I think, too, there's a female thing there of trusting. Mm -hmm. And and also, I remember in the book, um, Nice Girls Don't Get Rich, which is the follow-on to Nice Girls Don't Get the Corner Office, she was saying that a lot of women, we just assume that often that it's men, let's face it, sometimes in the financial world, we just assume that they know what they're talking about because they say things in a much more kind of confident way in a way. And it can be a female thing of just like, oh, well, maybe they know more about it than I do. Or mm -hmm. maybe, you know, and we don't trust our instincts around it. So I think it's also, cool. yeah, and it's being brave enough to ask questions. You know, whenever I am working with someone new or there's an opportunity, whether it's an investment opportunity, I have no shame. I'll say, I, can you explain what you just meant there? Because I don't understand. What's the paperwork on that? What's the, you know, what are the possible indications? Are there liabilities? Like I want to understand everything. And I think it's important that we don't feel a sense of shame around not knowing, you know, around yes. not understanding a term and being brave enough to ask the questions and to slow down the action and to say, okay, I need this in, you know, everyday layman's terms, explain it to me. And if you can't get it, if it ever gets to the point where you still can't get it, it's probably not the kind of opportunity that you want to be putting your money into or the kind of person that you want to be trusting with your finances. Oh, absolutely. And actually, actually I did this this week. We are meeting with our architects and they said some weird thing and everyone's nodding like, yeah. And I just went, what does that mean? <laughs> and I thought, exactly. I don't know. I'm not going to sign up to something, that, you know, just because I'm afraid of looking a little bit stupid. And he was just like, oh, sorry. Yeah, that's a jargon term, blah, blah, blah. Yep. I was like, oh, yeah, cool. Um, now, I was thinking, too, of all the famous people that you have met, right? You know, you've worked with Tony Robbins, you've done stuff with Oprah, Richard Branson, like all these kind of cool people. And I suppose, too, if you, if you stood and looked at them, they kind of look different types of wealthy people, right? I mean, yeah. if you didn't know who Richard Branson was, you wouldn't necessarily think he was like this super rich guy because he looks pretty chilled, like, you know, pretty normal. What is a money lesson that you've learned from, like, I guess someone famous recently, and we'll go into like, you know, non-famous people in a minute, but those kind of guys that you you see a lot, what have you learned from them about money? I think it's a reaffirmation of something that I know in my heart to be true is when it comes to money, there's always more where that came from. You know, I don't, and I haven't experienced any of the folks that you've named um, in any kind of way, you know, blowing money or being wasteful about it. But there was certainly a sense of ease around it and a sense that there's more than enough to go around. There's more than enough to take care of people, to take care of family, mm -hmm. to provide beautiful experiences and to really enjoy life. So there was a lack of scarcity. And I think that the epidemic of scarcity, not only as it relates to money, you know, it relates to time, it relates to love, it relates to status and people feeling, well, if someone gets successful, they have the only top seat on the podium and there's no room for anyone else. So I think scarcity is one of the most destructive forces um, in the world right now. And one lesson that I have learned, and it just gets reaffirmed when I've been around folks like that, or even other folks who aren't necessarily famous, but that absolutely have achieved a certain level of financial wealth is that lack of scarcity and feeling like oh, there's not going to be enough to share with another person or to provide or a way to kind of generate more. Yeah. And I suppose too, both or all three of those examples that I gave, very giving people as yeah. well. Generous. And I've noticed, very generous. And I've noticed 
um, in you as well over the last couple of years, that seems to have become an even bigger part of your life is the yeah. philanthropy, right? Can you tell us a little bit more about that and how it fits into the overall wealth picture? Yeah, I, I really do believe when it comes to money, there is more than enough to go around. And, you know, so many of us and, you know, not everyone, but many of us, especially folks who might be watching this video, many of us have hit what Warren Buffett calls the ovarian lottery, right? We happen to be born <laughs> in a particular place where we have running water and electricity and an opportunity to at least have some basic education and an opportunity to at least have some basic health care. And those things most of us take for granted because there are literally billions of fellow humans out there right now who did not win that ovarian lottery, who happened yeah. to be born in a place, not of their choosing, that's how the cards fell. And they are up against so many obstacles that many of us just never even had to look at. So for me, it's about taking a global perspective. And you know, it's about recognizing some harsh truths that you know, we're all equal in terms of our capacity inside, but we're not all equal when it comes to opportunity. And for us to be able to level that playing field and to not just be so insular and think like, oh, you know, I can't have the house that I want or I can't have the shoes that I want. It's like, you know what? There's like a kid dying out there because they, they don't even have access to clean water. And these girls are denied education. And these mothers are dying, giving childbirth. Like this is insane that this is still happening in 2017. And for me, I think it's our responsibility and it's just an opportunity to really create a more just and equitable world. So why not use what we have to make a difference? You know, there's an interesting stat that I love to share with people, uh, to provide education, healthcare, and sanitation for every person in the world on a basic level, it would cost us 28 billion per year. Now, of course, that's a huge number. But then you contrast it with what we spend globally on ice cream every year. Mm, bottled water or... <laughs> Which is the global, yeah. the global spending on ice cream each year is roughly 59 billion. Wow. That's over double of what it would cost. So you have to just look at that and realize that there isn't lack in this world. What there is a lack of is a lack of will to do something about it. So it's not about us not having enough resources. It's about that there's not enough of us that give a shit and care to be able to solve these problems. So that's why it's such an important part of my life because I don't feel okay going to sleep at night thinking about other humans in the world and what they're going through and not at least doing something to try and help. Absolutely. And I see women in our community who are starting their businesses and they feel icky almost about making more money because they're worried about money equaling greed. Mm. And the women in our community, they don't act like that when they have money. You know, like you think of the B-School community or my community, when women get money, they spend it in beautiful ways. And in, entrepreneurship is just the most empowering thing for women. And I know you're really passionate about that. So, I mean, it's a great segue into B-School and about your, what is your bigger why for B-School? You know, for me, it really is empowering women financially and empowering everyone. I mean, you know, obviously we have a majority of women that are in B-School, but the yeah. content and the curriculum, nothing is gender specific. And we have our small but mighty um, population of men who we love and we're, they're always welcome. But when women are financially empowered, the entire world wins. So their immediate family wins because they always invest in their kids and education and healthcare. So we're lifting up the next generation. And their community wins because, again, research has proven most often women will invest in their local community as well. And when you have stronger communities, you have stronger economies. So all of a sudden, you start to see in a very, very clear way when women are empowered financially, which usually means that they're also educated, it also means that they have certain freedom. So there's this huge ripple effect that happens. And in my own life, for me, when I was first starting my business, to be honest, I was really kind of grossed out. When I started learning about entrepreneurship and it was in this new kind of world of digital entrepreneurship, you know, I didn't go to graduate school, so I don't have an MBA. But when I went out and tried to start to piece together things on my own and I would go to conferences, it was like 99.9% .9 men who were up there teaching about small business. And 
much of the time, not all of the time, again, this is a gross generalization. I'm not saying everyone. These are the broad strokes. Often I would hear them talk about their customers like they were nothing more than numbers on the bottom of a balance sheet. And it was always about how to extract as much profit as possible from these people and upsell. Blah, 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 blah. And I understood from an intellectual perspective that idea of quote unquote maximizing profit. But I will tell you, Denise, that my heart and my soul was breaking. I was like, this is not my idea of what business is about or what business could be about. And I always knew deep down that business could be and should be a force for good. So one of the reasons I started B-School was because I wanted to provide an opportunity for especially women who wanted to learn about marketing and sales, but who wanted to do it in a way that was full of integrity and transparency and congruency, and that they could take their gifts, their God-given gifts of what they were put on this earth to do, and learn how to translate that into a business, should they so choose, and learn how to do it with integrity the whole way through, how to actually keep their personality aligned, how to be able to share what they believe in, how to be able to attract customers and retain customers and provide outstanding customer experiences, and then on another level, Level, how to make their business a force for good beyond profits. You know, most women that I tend to meet, they don't just care about making it for themselves or getting more so they could have this enormous house or like five closets full of clothes. I, I know in my own, I could give a shit less about that stuff. I really don't care. I wear the same stuff over and over and over. Um, it's just, you know, it, it doesn't matter. Okay, and um, Many women that I meet feel the same way. Yes, they want to take care of their children. Yes, they want to take care of their family and make sure things are safe and secure, but they also really, really, really want to see this world evolve into a better place and they're willing to work their buns off to make that happen. Yes, absolutely. And you see it happening in B-School too. Someone becomes successful, they hire other women and it does have a ripple effect yes. in, in everything. And you know, it really is changing the world. And you think of, I don't know how many people have gone through B-School now, over 20,000? Over 30. Over 30 freaking thousand people. Yeah. That is like, that is like a town. <laughs> like that is like a, a little, that is like a little economy, right? That's probably has more GDP than some little countries. But a question I've heard recently and probably over the last year, we're tending to this place where people go, you know what? I can learn everything on the internet now for free, mm -hmm. you know, why is it still relevant to join a course like B school instead of just like, Oh, I can find a little bit of marketing here, a little bit of absolutely there. Well, I think, um, first of all, I think it's such a positive thing that there are so much free information out there. And I will say very plainly, everything that we teach in B school, if you wanted to, you could go find it online for free and more. Absolutely. But you know, there's this great saying by a gentleman named EO Wilson. He says, we're drowning in information, but we're starving for wisdom. And one of the things that I've noticed in my own life, because I'm a voracious lifelong learner. Yeah, I could take loads of time and, and try and parse things together. But I will tell you with the amount of information out there, it's actually getting harder and harder to parse through to understand like, well, who are the voices I can trust and what's the sequence here? Because if you don't get the sequence right, it's not all going to work. If you don't have a source that you can trust and verify, if you don't have other people to connect with, if you don't have someone telling you and guiding you, hey, for your business, this is really relevant, but there's all this other stuff you can just pretty much ignore. Like you don't need to do that or you don't need to do that right now. So I think, you know, when it comes to B-School, it's not about secret videos and it's not about information that you quote unquote can't get anywhere else. You know, we've been doing this now since 2010. I've been in business for 17 years with over 30,000 graduates. It's like, it's about the transformation. It's about the experience. It's about putting yourself in an environment that challenges you to reach your full potential. And I'll say this, I know this for a fact, you know, knowing things, knowing information. It's like, yeah, are you doing anything with it? Have you actually used it? Is anyone pushing you forward? Because if not, you got to really ask yourself, what's the value of all that free information? So I think no matter whether it's B-School or anything else, if you can find a teacher or an instructor or a trainer, someone that you resonate with, who for whatever reason, their energy starts to pull out the best in you, man, run. Do whatever you got to do, whether it's a $10 course, a $10,000, whatever it is. I've noticed that in my life. I'll tell you, Denise, there are certain trainers and certain teachers who, even if I quote unquote, know all the information, 
man, I will go to that course again because something happens in me. Something gets activated. I find a new level of commitment in myself. I find new ideas. And it's not about just, again, getting stuff for free because it's all out there right now. I think it's really about saying, well, what is it going to take for me to put these things into action? And do I care enough to have community around me and want to do it in such a way where I'm really giving myself the best chance possible to get results? Yes. And you know, I'm a big fan of B-School. I joined oh, yes. in 2011. Yep. My B-School mug from that year just broke, by the I'm way. Gonna have to send, I have a little stockpile. <laughs> I might have to send you an I was like, Oh my God, this is like stayed with me for years. You know, I'm a huge fan and guys stick around. I'm going to tell you a little bit about personally the results I've gotten out of B-School, what I love about it and my B-School bonus, um, which, you know, a huge fan, Marie, thank you so much. You have changed my life. I don't mind saying that to you every single year because it is true. All of my best girlfriends, best business girlfriends I've met through B-School. <laughs> makes me so happy. That makes me so happy. It's very, very cool. And, you know, I just want to thank you. I love you. And thanks so much for what you do. And everybody join B-School. And I'll tell you more about that in a second. But if you just have one final word of wisdom for our lucky bees listening. Oh, yeah. I would say this. You are on this planet for a reason. So your ideas matter. Your voice matters. Your perspective matters. And if you don't work every single day to share it, the world will have lost something truly irreplaceable, which is you. So, you know, we say it on the end of every Marie TV, the world really does need that special gift that only you have. So whether it's B-School or whatever you're going to do, please, for the love of all things holy, get out there and share it and make it happen. Thank you so much. See you soon. See you in B-School. Bye, everyone. Hey, it's me again. How cool was that? Oh, I don't mind telling you I was a little bit nervous before that interview and I did a little bit of tapping and, you know, it's so, how often do you get to talk to someone who is that successful, both from an influential point of view, but also from a monetary point of view and you realize, hey, they're just normal people just like you and me. And Marie has just created amazing stuff with B-School. I joined in 2011 and I remember I watched like one or two of the first lessons and then I just went away and implemented and I created and marketed my first ever course, which was uh, the Inspired Life Formula course, which had five people on there. And that was the start for me to grow my business into a million dollar business now. Uh, we've been at the million dollar level for a couple of years now. And you know what? It really is because of B-School. I know you can do other courses and you know find stuff for free, as Marie said, but nothing really created that community for me like B-School, created that sense of sisterhood, created that economy. As I said, it's a little economy. You can find clients in there. You can find mentors in there. You can find your suppliers, your next VA, your next website designer. It really is its own economy. And that investment for me in B-School has paid off multiple, multiple, multiple times. And I'd really hate to think where I would be without B-School. I also asked her at the end, like, why is it still relevant? And I've heard people say, oh, well, you know, there's so many courses out there now. Why would I bother joining B-School? Or, you know, some, stuff like B-School is kind of irrelevant now. And it really isn't. You know, it's, again, joining a community, joining a space where success is the conversation. And uh, Marie does add new stuff all the time, right? But as she said, it's not so much about the content it's about everything coming together in one place and being somewhere where success is the norm it's absolutely the norm so my b-school bonus once a year we do this where if you join b-school through my affiliate link i get a commission from marie i don't mind saying that i'm very transparent as an affiliate so once a year if you want to join b-school we also give you access to my lucky bitch money boot camp it is such a perfect marriage of business and money mindset. And we have, oh, we have a quite, a quite nice group of people who have done both, actually, because they're so complimentary. It's really hard to be successful in business without doing money mindset work, I believe. And it's really hard to make money without a vehicle for your, for your money to go into. So whether that's um, business or uh, starting your own business or impro even improving some of the stuff you do at work if you were in a salary, B-School will still help you. Now, all the information about our bonus this year is at luckybitch.com slash B-School. That's the letter B and then school, all one word. And 
I really encourage you. It's such a great investment to join B School. And if you join through my link, then you get my Lucky Bitch Money Boot Camp as well, which really will set you up for an incredible year. It's your time to step up around business, to make things happen for yourself so you can create abundance for you, your family, or causes that you love. It's absolutely your time to step up and be a success story. And you can be a success story in B school, like I am. You can be a success story in our Lucky Bitch Money Boot Camp. Luckybitch.com slash B school. I hope you enjoyed this interview this week and I'd love to hear from you um, and what ahas you got from the interview as well. Okay, see you later. Bye. Have a lucky day.